Good afternoon. Yes, we've hit past noon. <laughs> um, I am Krista Porter here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And today's um, webinar, we are talking about the upcoming NLA and SLA annual conference and orientation to um, what to expect next week. Mm -hmm. um, we have a group of people here. Um, to my left right here, Michael Stratman is the um, Current executive director still of the <laughs> Nebraska things are in flux. It's okay at the Nebraska Library Association, and Andrew Cano over there and the incoming president of, of the Nebraska Library Association, um, and online remotely with us we also have Angela um, Booger who is the current president of NLA. Um, Angie, um, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Richardson. Richardson. Richardson is um, an SLA president. And um, Andy Olson is, I don't know, what is, is he, is our tech person? What is he that? What do you call chair. him? AV chair, okay. <laughs> For the conference, going to talk about um, our new uh, app that we have. Um, and also online with us is Anika Ramirez, who is part of the diversity committee and LA is going to potentially talk about what they're doing. Also here with us in the room over off camera right now, um, if necessary, uh, Joanne McManus, who is uh, the um, grants program manager here at the Library Commission, who um, if there are any questions about the um, something cool that's going to be available at the conference for you to look at, some makerspace stuff, but we'll get along to that. So I will hand it with you guys to okay. take it away and talk. Well, I wanted to this. thank everybody that was able to join us this afternoon. Um, we're doing a lot of different things this year at conferences, uh, or at this conference, uh, that we've done some of our previous conferences. So we wanted to kind of give people some orientation and some heads up and, and a lot of different interesting things coming on uh, about this year that we may not necessarily have done previous year. We'll be using the NLA conference website on the uh, Nebraska Library Association site. Um, so we'll be We'll be uh, presenting that, but any information that we have here will also be on that website. Um, so make sure you check that out uh, in the, the next seven days as we come up. As of noon, we are exactly seven days away from registration opening um, at our desk. Uh, we'll be continuing to add information as we come across it. So make sure you check that page. And as always, if you can't find anything on that page or have any questions, feel free to, to drop, us in, drop me an email. Um, based on the NLA website, it comes directly to me and we'll get that responded as quickly as possible. So when we'll start with, uh, first of all, I want to make sure everybody has their uh, hotel rooms and uh, the registration information um, and the reservation is on the website. Make sure and check it out. Let's see here. We can... Some people had questions about what sites were available to us and where we have. Now, as you come in off I-80, you'll see here just to the north of the interstate is the Yonas Conference Center. This is where our event is. Holiday Inn right here. Those of you that have been in Nebraska a while, remember this used to be the Ramada, uh, but it is now a Holiday Inn. So it is one of the, the uh, hotels at conference. The three that we're primarily using are the Wingate, the Fairfield, and the Hampton. Uh, your preference is probably based upon your frequent uh, flyer miles or, or reservations. Other than that, all three are fantastic sites. They're all giving us the same conference rate, um, so feel free to book with any of those. And that does show Hampton and Fairfield are actually physically are connected. Are actually physically connected. There, there, is, there is a ramp across there. Um, if you never want to go outdoors, that's where it's If you never want to go, <laughs> although, you know, the, I will say the wind gate to the Onus is probably a good 15 or 20 yards. Um, so you don't ever have to worry about being stuck out on those free thunderstorms or, or uh, hopefully no snowstorms by next week. So they are all very, very close. <laughs> so there is really no uh, significant benefit to the others. There are a few. There's a Holiday Inn Express across the interstate, uh, but actually our conference rate is cheaper um, at these three than uh, the other uh, hotel on the U.S. campus. So make sure and get your reservation in right away. Let's see, where's our other file here? That'll be it, yeah. Do you remember the PDF one, sir? What is the PDF one? Do left. There we are. There we go. So once you get into the Yona site, if you've never been there before, it is very intuitive and easy to find your way around. Um, what you'll see here is a breakout of what these rooms look like. Many of these rooms will be changing configuration as you see through here. So there may not necessarily be all eight diamonds 
Um, at some point, one and two may exist as one room, et cetera. Uh, the dotted lines are just where we could have rooms. An example of that is in the crystal ballroom. Uh, two, three, and four will be the, ex or actually I believe one, two, and three, are the exhibitor space. So we will be having um, all of our exhibitors in those areas. In addition to a really cool thing, as alluded to, we'll be having the maker space in that area. Uh, the commission has a fantastic display set up. Um, the entire width of the exhibitor hall, um, so there's lots of space uh, to come and see. They'll also be one of our featured presentations um, on Thursday morning, so make sure you come and check that out. All of our entertainment and food uh, will be in the vendor exhibitor space, um, with the exception of early morning coffee. Uh, those of you who are coffee drinkers will know that we will have coffee in the hallway across from registration immediately upon opening of the building. Um, so, <laughs> right, I only made that mistake once as a conference director, not having oh, coffee yeah. first thing in the morning. So, uh, but the majority of the rooms you'll see being used are the diamond ballrooms. We do have a few events up here in the Ruby conference rooms. These are on the second floor. Um, there is an accessible elevator um, in this space right here. There are also multiple sets of stairs clearly marked that are coming up to that space. When you first walk into the main conference center, registration will be in this area. Uh, there are two desks. You'll be able to see which ones are there. Um, these are access to the conference hotels, as Krista pointed out there. The only tricky part about this site is occasionally to get to some of these diamond ballrooms, you do need to go all the way down to this end and up this hallway. The area is very well signed, very intuitive to navigate, um, so I don't think anyone has to worry much about it. The only thing to remember, Ruby is on the second floor and Diamond is in the center. So those are your big things in terms of conference layout um, we will also be having a, uh, the new members roundtable, we're having a first year uh, conference attendee table uh, near the registration booth. So if it is your first year at a conference, make sure you let us know and we'll get that. We're doing registration a little bit different, a little bit simpler. When you come in, you'll pick up your name tag. Many of you who already registered have opted out of a printed program in favor of the app, which Anna will be talking about in a few moments. You'll pick up your program if you still wanted one. You'll pick up your name tag. Receipts will be available. Um, if you need one for reimbursement, I know many places uh, employees have to pay for their registration and seek reimbursement. You can ask for those at registration. Um, what this does is this reduce costs instead of giving everybody out of packet. Um, uh, the, the conference committee opted not to spend multiple hundreds of dollars on envelopes and labels this year. Um, so if you do need a registration receipt, please ask at the registration desk for that. So registration opens 12 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon for pre-conferences. You're welcome to come by anytime, even if you're uh, uh, not doing a pre-conference, pick up your registration packet and, and the other sort of goodies. Beginning at five o'clock on Wednesday night, we will be having a wine tasting um, and open bar. Um, so those of you that have registered for the wine trolley and tour will be receiving a ticket for a complimentary drink at that. Even if you haven't uh, registered for that, we are sold out unfortunately for the trolley, but you're still welcome to come and partake at the, at the wine bar um, fo immediately following pre-conferences from five to six. So the, uh, yeah, yeah, that's your, uh, it will be here right in the reception area um, across from the registration desk. So. Uh, feel free to come down and get a drink, kick off conference right. Uh, those of you on the, the, the trolley tour to the other libraries in the city, and there's some fantastic spaces we have set up um, for this trolley to visit and see some renovations and some new spaces at Carney Public. We see them at UNK. We're going to CCC. Uh, there's a, a local uh, genealogy, family history center. Yes, there are lots of different yeah. cool places you'll be going around to. Um, and if you're not on that trolley, feel free to stay and drink with us at uh, the Jonas on, on Wednesday night. We'll begin opening Thursday morning at 7 a.m. Uh, for registration. Booths and sessions um, open at 8 a.m. Um, 
We're starting off with our keynote. The mayor of Kearney, as, as well as our, our, our own dignitaries, will be there to start things off. One of the interesting things we're sort of mixing things up with this year is we'll be having some featured presentations. Yeah. So immediately after keynote, you we'll, want to switch over to the website? Yeah, I do. We will show them on that. So as you come through here, you'll see on the schedule, and Andrew's going to go more through the schedule, but one of the things I want to highlight a little bit on this is that we will have four featured presentations to break out immediately after keynote. This is something we've done a little different uh, uh, this year than we have in past years. Um, so instead of just breakout sessions where we normally have eight or nine tracks yeah. right after keynote, we're going to try something different. Or after exhibitor break. And, and of course, and there will uh, be uh, refreshments and donuts and muffins yes. and all sorts of things there at exhibitor break. So we'll get a chance to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is as we're getting into the meat of the schedule, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Andrew and we'll talk about those. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, you, Mike mentioned a lot of good things. Another special event I want to highlight that is sold out is the Sleuth Room on Thursday night. Uh, many of you signed up for that. That is sold out. Uh, you should have received an email with some logistics. If you have not, just let us know. Uh, I am personally in the 6 p.m. one, and I'm uh, looking forward to that event. I think it'll be fun to be kind of locked up with our colleagues for an hour and a half trying to escape out of the room. So it should, right. should be fun. We did try and get everybody their preference if it yeah. was indicated on pre-registration, but that wasn't always the case. So bear with us and have fun. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So again, here's the conference page. You should all know where that is. And if you scroll down, it's a new link under the full program. You now go to the proof of the printed program. Andy will kind of show you what it looks like in the app, so uh, stay tuned for that in a few minutes. But, okay, here, okay, there it is. So this is what our printed app looks like. You'll see the resolution's a little bit off, but the, the printed version will look nice. Uh, by the way, kudos to Aaron Colonna at UNL for designing this logo. We're very, very happy with it. And for those of you that haven't picked up on it, it ties into the state brand of um, uh, the, you know, the good life and great opportunity, and what better doorway to that than libraries. Yep, and I would note that Beth Rosenthal and Sarah Hack, both the Kearney Public, put a lot of work into the printed program, and they did an amazing job with it. Yeah. So we'll see here, and you can see uh, at the beginning of the program, uh, you'll have kind of a summary of everything, and then as you scroll down, you'll start to see the actual descriptions uh, after some of these welcomes. Just want to point out that, I, as Mike said, we do have our keynote kicking it off. It's, she's a, a superstar speaker. I think you're all going to like her a lot. Uh, we have a tentatively scheduled for 815. It really just depends on when the uh, introductions get done. We don't know if the mayor is going to take too long. Angela and Angie are going to have a welcome, but approximately 815. So if you're on your way there, I would definitely encourage you to try to be at the center by 8 a.m. if possible and at 815. Uh, just to go back to the pre-conferences real quick, uh, these were very, very popular. I think the uh, for Ethics of Access has sent out an email to the participants. We're very excited about these. And again, uh, these shoot will start at one, and they all will end uh, by five of you are signed up for that. So we're looking forward uh, to those of you who are there. Uh, we'll keep scrolling down, and we will get to the meat of this. Here we go. So again, Michael's already gone over the rooms. Uh, immediately after the keynote, as Mike was saying, we actually do have the exhibitor break. There'll be some refreshments in there, and there'll be some poster sessions. We have seven posters this year. I really encourage everybody to kind of walk around. Uh, they have a variety of topics. I think they put a lot of work into this, and this is a great opportunity to get just kind of a quick three to five minute update on a project or topic that you know may benefit your work. Uh, mentioned here the Kimball Library. They're coming, you know, as far as possible from. The corner of Nebraska, a lot of exciting things there. I think if you're from a small library, you might want to look to them uh, because they've done a lot. There's also some uh, college and education oriented ones. This one I think is going to be very, very popular. There's a lot of new libraries being built for all kinds of libraries. So if you want to renovate or build a new library and not move the collection, Heather Walkwalter is the expert on that. So you don't have to be, you know, carrying books around or moving things, that should be exciting. I, I want to know how she did that, to be honest with you. That's going to be exciting. Yeah. And then as you'll see, the diversity committee is very active, so they'll have theirs as well. And again, another small library here. So I encourage you to all read the program so you can have an idea of what they are. So now we get to professional workshops. This actually was a happy accident. We ended up having about a 90-minute block available. It was uh, too, too long for one concurrent session and too short for two concurrent sessions. So Mike and I brainstormed and we came up with this the idea of a 75 to 80 minute 
workshop. Uh, most of them are accessible to just about everybody, so really go through them. Pick the one that you think will help you. Uh, for example, you get to Real Law. It's Rich Leiter from the uh, Schmidt Law Library. That is aimed at just everybody. Uh, that is, um, you know, just because you're, you're in a public library, it doesn't matter. He's going to give this presentation to anybody who works with any kind of legal research. I used to be in the public library, and I would get legal research all the time. And many of you know, we are here to help you find the answer. We're not here to help you find the answer. You know, not, we're not here to give you the answer. So that would be a good one. Uh, book repair. I would say if you're in TSRT, that's probably a good one for you. Uh, that was a very exciting uh, presentation. Uh, the, uh, if you're in CNU and working in any kind of instruction, uh, Stephen McGahan from uh, UNK will be here uh, and you'll be developing lessons. So my, uh, the point I want to really everybody to take away is when you attend these workshops, you will have something to take back with you to work. That was the goal as I worked with these presenters is you will each take something. So the one that was at the top was intellectual freedom. And I know that they've given several presentations. It's going to be presumed that you've read the manual. If you have not read the manual, please let us know. We can send you a copy of it or contact Mike Elsner. And this one will actually help you develop ideas of how to implement that manual at your library. So very, very exciting. And again, I encourage everybody uh, to go through it. Just to be able to have time for Andy, I'm just going to go through the rest of this real quick. Everybody can uh, kind of, again, look at this at, at the website. A lot of good concurrent sessions. We've done our very best to. I, I would sure. add, add a quick thing about the lunches. All lunches are complimentary with your registration. Uh, so don't feel like you have to go outside and get somebody to eat. Everybody's already paid. There are no meal tickets. Um, and we are doing buffet style this year. Um, and there's a, they're setting up multiple tables, so the lines won't be very long. But uh, go ahead and pick a luncheon and, and get there for your free meal. Good point. Yeah, we tried to skip over the lunch, but you're right. That is very good. And if I can speak for the NLA one, and Angie Richardson may have some comments about NSLA, but at NLA will definitely uh, kick off uh, a new strategic revisioning. We'll talk about some of the work being done. We have some bylaws uh, changes that we're going to talk about. And it'll be your first chance to meet our new uh, executive director, Joe Pittman. So, again, I know sometimes people kind of um, go out to lunch and want to get some air but I would encourage everybody uh, to do this. And Angie, since you're on the line, do you want to speak about NSLA luncheon? Um, thank you, Andrew. Really just kind of reiterating what, what you're mentioning, we're going to um, introduce our, our new board members that came on board in July, and then we will have our business meeting um, and talk about some exciting things that we're, we're going to hopefully um, kind of, as you mentioned, re-envision where we want NSLA to go. And so we have some great ideas to, to discuss with um, membership as well. Great, great. So again, as we go through it, we have done our very, very best to try to space these out so that you don't have, you're not in a position that you have to choose between three sessions and you can only be at one. I know that can be very, very frustrating. You know, you go to a conference and man, I've, I've been there where there was one conference where all four concurrent sessions I wanted to be at. <laughs> so we've done our best to space them out. We've also done our very best to put them in the correct rooms. Uh, so that we don't have you know people standing outside uh, and the like. And as Michael mentioned earlier, most of them I'll highlight here. Most of them are in diamond rooms, so this will be very easy as compared to last year's layout. Uh, you'll all pretty much be there in the middle. So if you know for whatever reason you can't find the room, all you do is just kind of keep walking around the center area, and you'll kind of come across it. Right. You'll see a business meeting yeah. scattered throughout these. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, the things we've had in the past for feedback is having all of the roundtable meetings at the same time makes it difficult for those of us that bounce between different ones. Members are multiple, yeah. Right. So we've tried to scatter those throughout so that if you want to attend roundtables, you yeah. can certainly do that throughout the conference. Exactly. And in addition to spacing them out, I also made an effort. It was not perfect, but I made an effort to schedule the roundtable meetings during times that did not have sessions where those members would want it to be at. So for example, uh, like uh, ITART, the intellectual, uh, you know, I'm sorry, information technology, I tried my best to put them in a block where there was no technology related presentations. Not perfect, but again, we're trying to respond to people's feedback and comments. So again, you can just see this, you know, this is on the website, it's also on the app. Uh, I would just encourage everybody to identify which sessions really interest them the most. If you have any questions about the content, if you may not be aware of what they are, reach out to me, reach out to Mike, reach out to the presenters. One of them in particular that I'm going to highlight before um, uh, moving over to the uh, afternoon sessions here on Friday is in the morning. Michael, go over that map here. Sorry. Here we go. In the morning, I did talk to um, 
the presenters here from UNL, which are my colleagues, which are your partners in service. And they wanted me to stress, this is kind of a special request, that you know, this is an actually intended for public libraries. Uh, so CNU members are welcome to come, but this really is, for anyone that doesn't know, UNL as the land-grant flagship institution here in the state, we do offer a lot of resources that are available to anybody. So again, I don't want anybody seeing the credentials and saying, oh, that's, that's a CNU presentation, it's not for me. It, it absolutely is um, on that as well. And then finally, the last thing I'll mention, and Mike may have some things to fill in, I just scrolled past the exhibitor uh, map. It, oh, first of all, there's also Golden Soar. So uh, we do have an author this year Skyping in, in there, so that's going to be very exciting. And the Golden Awards is, uh, Golden Soar is very, very popular, so uh, Kathy Schultz will answer that. So at the end, I know a lot of you have to get back on the road. You have several hours to drive back. You want to get back to your kids, families, etc. I completely get that. But I am hoping people stick around at Angie Richardson and I at the end will have some very brief closing remarks and we're going to give a sneak preview of next year's conference. You know, uh, believe it or not, our new vice presidents, uh, presidents elect have really been working hard and they're going to have some updates and we'll share that with you. So, you, you know, as you leave, you can get excited about next year's conference as well. And then the final thing I'll mention, because Joanne is here to my left, is we have those maker spaces. It's going to be available throughout the entire conference. So if there's a particular block that, hey, you know what, none of the seven presentations really speak to you, you're welcome to go into that space, interact with that space. There's going to be commission staff there at all times. And there are two workshops um, associated with it. One is the uh, morning block on Thursday. They will have uh, a hands-on workshop where you actually get to produce some cool things. Uh, and if you have questions about that, Joanne, I'll be happy to answer. And then later on on Thursday at 3 o'clock uh, in a separate room, there's going to be a presentation of you know how you can bring one of those innovation studios to your library. So if you like what you see in that makerspace, guess what? You might be able to bring that uh, with you. Don't, don't take any of the equipment home with you. I think Joanne will <laughs> probably tackle you on the way out. But we will find you similar equipment that we can bring uh, to you. So that's all I have to say. Angie, do you want to speak to NSLA, anything you have going on? And Mike as well, do you want to fill in any of the gaps that I have? No, you did a great job, Andrew. Thank you. I would just point out that on Thursday, we have tried to put um, many of the NSLA related presentations in the Ruby 6 just to keep, you know, it, it easy to get up and down, you know, change rooms. They don't have to change rooms. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't in one yeah. location, a track similar to having a track in one location. A little bit, yes. Now, that being said, you know, you may find that there are other presentations, but we, we just tried to make it as easy as possible. And then on Friday, um, then kind of the same thing down in the Diamond Rooms. There's there's a couple different rooms. Diamond mm -hmm. 10 is where we, we kind of start out. Um, exciting for, excited to have many of the speakers that we have, many of the proposals that were submitted, and <coughs> really looking forward to a great conference. And, and I might piggyback on that, Angie, and say uh, Friday the uh, we have a great speak a great keynote speaker, Todd Burleson, um, who was the uh, librarian of the year in the the school librarian of the year, um, I believe, here last year. Twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Yeah. So some great stuff there. Um, Thursday night uh, after the conclusion of the breakout sessions, we do have our annual uh, exhibitors bash. Um, so the drink tickets you'll get at uh, registration. You'll be able to come in and get a drink. We have some entertainment. Um, we have a lot of neat stuff going on. Is that it does not. It is a secret. So <laughs> it's coming, but, but we're not. It's not Garth Brooks. So um, and that'll be contained within this exhibitor section here. Um, you'll see the map. This, of course, as in every year, is subject to change. We, we always have changes up to the last minute, um, cancellations, additions, moves. Um, so uh, this particular space sort of challenges us a little bit with power and, and electric access, or uh, wired access for the internet. So we often do a little bit of, of moving in this particular venue. Um, so you may see some changes from this. But make sure you get a chance, every chance you can, to go through, talk to your favorite vendors, see it. Uh, they do us a tremendous service in, in, in participating in this conference and, and bringing their wares to us, in, and uh, they help fund it and keep our prices reasonable. You'll see a number of sessions 
uh, keynotes and what have you that are sponsored by these same vendors. So make sure you give them a chance um, and, and check them out. Uh, we have some new ones uh, as, as well as some of our traditional. So a lot of neat stuff going on this year. After our exhibitor uh, bash on Thursday night, we'll also be having diner rounds. If you'd like to sign up for those, please do that before noon on Thursday at the registration desk if you want to go out um, with the group. And then following that, we'll come back and we have uh, a cash bar for the pub quiz. Um, so we'll be having a party late into the night uh, on Thursday night uh, just to make Friday morning that much more challenging. Yeah, and what happens at conference stays at conference. <laughs> so that's just a good rule of thumb. So speaking of schedules, Andy, are you ready to take us over and talk a little bit about the app? Absolutely. All right. Hold on a sec and I can get the app up and running. All right, Andy, you should see where you can share your screen. Got it. There you go. All right, you should see Google right now. Yes. All righty. Well, I'm going to keep it short and sweet because I think it is uh, fairly self-guiding. So attendees that view this that are maybe a little hesitant to get started, I would basically either follow the link in the email that you should have gotten as an attendee from Sketch, or you can just go to the website on your own. Now from here, you can log in up here at the top. I'm going to use a demo profile that I set up just to show you the start to finish. Okay, so I logged in. I can't see anything pertaining to the conference yet. So I'm going to click on events you're attending here in the middle. And lo and behold, here we are. And here is the SCED app. So from here, I would suggest that everybody who's attending go in and edit your profile right off the get-go. Uh, I think it's good practice to give yourself a picture, a face for uh, presenters, the other attendees to recognize uh, who's where during the conference. You can also sign in using Facebook, Twitter, just so it's easier to post about the sessions that you're attending. Scroll down here, you can update your company name and your position. You have a website that you want to share out, all this fun stuff, basic profile settings. Once you get that done, you can go to schedule here. Now this is basically what uh, Andrew showcased earlier. I showed the simple schedule from the little drop down and it just gives you the titles of each session. Now you can hover over each of these sessions and it gives the description and the speakers and any of the tags that it has with it. So if I wanted to add this successful programming in small libraries to my schedule, I just click on the box right next to it. It adds it. No big, no big deal. Um, if you need a, a more in-depth view, Go ahead and hit the extended from the drop down. And that gives you all the descriptions, which is even more similar to what Andrew showcased just a little bit ago. Now from here, this is a web-based web version, obviously. I'm on my computer here for this meeting. But the app on your phones is exactly the same. It's a web-based app. So what that means is you don't have to go to the iTunes store or the Google Play Store to download this app. This is based off the web, so it's everything's live that's happening, and it you treat it like a bookmark as you would on your Chrome browser or Internet Explorer or Firefox or Safari. If you do want to save uh, an app to your phone per se, you can save the site to your phone just from the browser settings within whatever browser you, you're using. Now, I've talked to somebody about some permission settings that kind of gave them a runaround on setting up on your phone. But for the few times that I've tried it with my phone and I tried it on my wife's phone, everything seems to, to work pretty straightforward. Um, I will be obviously at the concert or the conference, so you can track me down. I'll, I'll help you get it set up if you really need to. Apart from that, there are a few other features. Um, here on the right side of the screen, 
are the, the different tracks that we have set up. So you can filter by those color-coded bubbles. You can go directly to speakers. And if there's somebody that you just really want to follow around all day, that's one way to do it. Another reason to update your profile picture so people know who you are. Um, and apart from that, I think that I've got everything out there that I need to explain. Do you guys have anything for me? I, I just want to add real quick, Andy mentioned he's going to be on site, he's going to be very helpful, but it really would help a lot if people started loading the app now. Uh, we don't want you to be late to a presentation, Andy can only help one person at a time, uh, you know, et cetera. So uh, we would encourage everybody, and you know, not everybody attending conferences in this webinar, so if you know colleagues or friends going and they're interested in the app, mention it to them, and you know, we can take care of all technical issues or hiccups. Uh, between now and, and conference, uh, it'll just be a lot easier than, than on-site. It really is easy to use. Uh, I just know sometimes people have security settings on their phones or on their browsers uh, that may cause an unexpected issue. And again, we can address those as they come in uh, over the next week. I just want to say, I've actually used this um, app for other event, other conferences I've gone to, yeah. and it is, is really helpful, very slick, um, especially when you um, Andy was showing how you can add to your schedule sessions you want to yeah. attend, um, and I'm not sure. I have to check out. We, uh, for what when I was attending a conference last year, it would email me each day mm -hmm. in the morning. Here's what you said you're going to attend, so yeah. you have like a quickies thing on your phone or in your yeah. email saying, "Here's what you said you wanted to attend," so you can have that all set up. Also, this is um, everyone is logging into the same place. Other people can see what you're attending which is kind of cool if you're trying to hook up with some friends or colleagues and say, hey, are you going to this session, are you going to that session? If everyone checks in here, I can look in and see, oh, so-and-so is going to this one too. Maybe I'll join them at, I see they were interested in yeah. it. Let's ask them, you know, or if you see someone who attended something that you couldn't attend, you can add, you can find out from them yeah. just by looking here and say, hey, I saw you check, said you're going to that session. First of all, did you? Because check saying you're going to go, and, you know, can yeah. be different. Um, but it gives you some really good, you know, connections and networking um, options. And I'll also say on that note, it does give you the option to make your appearance there private. I do want this to be social and I want people to know I like knowing who's in the room. And, you know, again, like uh, Krista said, I like knowing, hey, this person went over here and we go talk to them. But we respect people's privacy. If you just simply don't feel comfortable with that, the app is still for you. When you set your profile, you can actually click a little box uh, that will kind of keep you hidden a little bit if, if you so choose. And this is only available to people who are going to art. This is not public to the world. This is, you have, as you saw, Andy had to log yeah. in and everyone has to log in to exactly. it. And only people who are attending our conference get that information to be able to log into this, um, the, the event. So only Nebraska Library yes. Association conference attendees are the people who would, who would see anything that's in here. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Andy? It gives us about 20 minutes for questions. We really, you know, we've um, tried to hit everything. Um, yeah, we do have a few questions. If yeah. anybody has any questions, um, yeah, let me bring this down. And while we're looking those up, I would note that you won't see anywhere in this uh, an evaluation form. Uh, this year we're trying something different, and we will directly mail evaluation uh, forms out to everyone uh, following conference for you to chance to, to have a direct uh, way to respond and give us feedback. Please do so. Your feedback is the only way uh, that we can continue to improve or change this conference yearly. I'm trying to get this to share the screen again. There it goes. Okay, I just mine. All right. All right, so if you do have any questions, type them into the question section, and I do have some that were from before and some that are coming in. Um, I had a question. Um, let's see if anyone's going to hear. Um, I noticed, and I had emailed about this before, um, but I wanted to let everyone else sure. know the thinking on it. Um, but traditionally, for the sessions, they have been sponsored mm -hmm. by a particular section or roundtable, yeah. and we're doing it a little differently this yeah. year. Can you explain it? That's correct. Yeah. People may be looking for something like that and saying, where are all the TSRT sponsored sessions? And you'll see it doesn't actually work that way. Yeah, th that's correct. And this is something that's going to be conversation at the board meeting in December because uh, we just had a few little issues with the uh, sponsorship, don't really want to go into detail on a lot of them, but you know, essentially right now under the current form, anybody can just choose any section as a sponsor, and I know some of the section leadership had a few questions, so just for just this year only, it is not a permanent decision, 
uh, we, we just decided to just not list sponsors. It, in that, no way, shape, or form that we do not, you know, obviously don't want to not appreciate the work that many session leaders have done in recruiting presentations and inviting speakers. Uh, we, you know, we do want to recognize that, but for this year, we decided to just omit that just to avoid a, a few hiccups. Uh, we will discuss a, a permanent solution in December, and all of you will have a chance uh, to be involved in that conversation. Uh, well, and, and all know that yes. there is no permanent decision because, yeah, as most point. of you with long-term yeah. memories know, some years we do this, some years we don't. So yeah. that's, that's uh, a good point. <laughs> when I say I remember yeah. it's, it's the how to do it and change it. I remember years ago. I think yeah. I remember you had to go through a section. We, we, we've done yeah. it. You had to. You didn't have and to. That was like a lot harder to do than just a yeah. person being able to say, right. I want to present. Let me just do it. Yeah. So, so it varies. It, but it we'll varies. be working at trying to figure out what we're doing next year and telegraphing that for me. What I did love, yeah. though, was when Andy was showing the sketch, how it has categories of different topics. Yes. Is that something? Who came up with those? And that's, that's Andy. Andy okay. did a great job that's, with the tracks. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we want to, you know, definitely mention and, and get this. That is a way to see exactly what you're interested in. Some particular in. type of librarianship. Go to yeah. the sketch thing and see. Exactly. And the presentation descriptions are clear enough, in my opinion, that yeah. if you have a particular type of job, but again, if you if you have a question about where you think you should best attend, I would start with the presenter. You know, they know their presentation best, and if not, just shoot us an email. We're happy to answer any questions. So thank you for bringing that up, Krista. Yeah. I just didn't want anybody else to be wondering something. Sure. Oh, yeah. Good, good question. Um, someone did have a question here, which I was wondering about, too. On the website, actually, there was previously here, along with the full program, there was a program at a glance where mm -hmm. you could just have a one, like a similar thing. And it looks like when you made this the PDF that that's gone now to the website. Yeah. Or was that on accident? On purpose? Uh, it was on purpose, but we can restore it. It'll take one click. So in fact, based on Krista's input, there's, I'll, I will Somebody restore it. Too, just, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to just take a quick peek at the program and say, oh, that one sounds interesting to me, you click it and it'll take you to the full description. Mm -hmm. I will restore that and it'll just be above program at a glance. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll, the, the, page is, the page was not deleted. The, the only thing that was deleted was the link. So we will restore that. Cool. Yeah. That's been useful for people. Mm -hmm. um, someone wants to know for the sleuth escape room, who would we have gotten the email from for that? I'm guessing maybe they don't know if they got gotcha. the email. Mary Rossler, R-O-E-S-S-L-E-R. -S -S -E I sent her a spreadsheet with everybody who was signed up. So whatever email address you entered into the spreadsheet is in there. If you were signed up for either the 6 o'clock or the 7.45 and you did not get an email yesterday, uh, or may, may have been this morning, I, I forget when I got it, just reach out to me, uh, you know, or, or if Mike's email is up there, if you'll get it to me, but uh, I'm at, it's a really long, obnoxious email. It's NLA President Elect at Gmail, so NLA President Elect, uh, and we will make sure that you get that information. But the, all you really need to know is be there 15 minutes early. Uh, so if you're in the six o'clock, five forty-five. If you're seven forty-five, eight. Be there on seven thirty, and then we will get you to the rooms uh, there. But again, if you have more specific questions, we're happy to answer them. And she says, actually, now that she knew we look for, she okay. says, "Thank you, I got it." Fantastic, great. Right. So they did go out. Yes, awesome. Mm -hmm. That's good to have someone else know. Let us yeah. know that it's there. Um, let's see. Oh, um, someone has a question about the first year attendee. Well, actually, round table. Oh, is that the, this is our first year, can we register for that at registration, or do we have to let someone know beforehand? Is, is this about the- Just, just show up and, and there'll be a thing there. Anika, do you want to talk a little bit about that? She's here. Is she there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anika, can you unmute yourself and let us talk, talk a little bit about the first year attending round table that you guys are going to have set up? There she is. Yeah, is it too loud? When I'm unmuted. We do have some background noise, but we can hear you. She did say she's in a coffee shop. The first time attendee table uh, will be in the registration area. And you come to the table, you get a button that you get to wear while during conference to meet, uh, so everyone knows that it's your first time. And then you also get a sheet to um, go around and collect uh, names and contact information. So it's kind of a networking tool to help people uh, feel a little more comfortable. 
um, getting to know folks. And then you come back with your with 20 uh, contacts, and you get to fill out a ticket and put your name in a drawing for uh, an Amazon gift card. And we'll be drawing some for the season. For that. I know that was a little muffled. I didn't catch everything, but <laughs> the answer is you don't have to register. You go to the table. You'll get a button that identifies you as a first year attendee. And then, if I heard correctly, there's some kind of raffle. I did not catch the prize. I can tell you it's probably uh, not Amazon a new car. Gift card. Amazon gift card. It wasn't a new car and it wasn't a cruise. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's an Amazon gift card. So, yeah, we really welcome all first year uh, attendees. So definitely swing by that table. It'll be very, very visible. Uh, the NMRT new member roundtable does a fantastic job. Yeah. yeah. She says, great, thanks. Okay. Yeah, and you can say she's um, she's coming in from a coffee shop somewhere, so that's a little background noise. Yeah. It's not usually like that where she works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Um, someone says, looking at this year's schedule, I noticed that unlike previous years, there doesn't seem to be a session focused on the upcoming summer reading session, some reading program. Um, except for something on booklets, I don't know what that would that is cool. Why is that? Should someone is usually well, a summer reading program session? And I would say a lot of those are based on the submissions that we get, uh, based on what we can present. So, um, a lot of times if, if people don't offer to present, we, we can't, uh, have a presentation on that topic. Yeah. On, on, yeah and on, that, on that particular presentation, uh, I'm working with Sally Snyder. We're, we are going to offer that in the spring. Uh, we just really wanted to get a lot of first timers in there, uh, and we will have a presentation on the Summer Reading Club, which is Library Rock, in in the spring, either through webinar or possibly the skip uh, spring meeting. Stay tuned for that because that is a very critical program. We definitely agree with that. But as as was mentioned, uh, Rebecca McCorkendale is doing a fantastic program, wrapping up her 2017 summer reading program. Uh, so if you're interested in getting ideas for summer reading programs, there is that one presentation. And for anyone who is, um, yes, she actually does reply, spring is too late for planning these things. Okay. Um, Sally's um, workshops that we do here at the Vehicle Library Commission will be starting in um, December, as usual. So the normal time from when she goes around the state and does her in-person summer reading program workshops, I think the first one is December 1st. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so um, she will still be doing those. So that's coming up in your, your, your usual time for starting up your summer reading plans for um, for next year. Yeah, and, uh, and speaking for NLA, we will, based on that feedback, definitely try to get uh, that program out, probably through a webinar, uh, probably in January. I'll work with Chris, then we'll send out more information on that. Well, okay, um, oh, questions about passwords and logging into Sketch. People apparently are trying to do it. They took your advice, Andrew, I'm right there. To yeah, that's Andy. <laughs> to do it. Um, what password do we use to access the app? Um, someone wants to know, and then someone says they went there, chose the option to log in after I found my event, and they don't see where to set up a username and password. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but Andy. I'm guessing that they're going to have to resort on the email that they get from the SCED app. So all the attendees that are registered right now should have gotten an email last night or last I, yep, yesterday. Yes. Yeah. So follow so that I, link. Instructions are in that email. Yeah, whatever. And yes, I, I, I'm presuming so, based on Andy saying, Andy, if somebody used an email, uh, let's just say they used a work email to register, but they prefer to change that email address, could they do so in their profile? Absolutely. Okay, so if, for those of you who didn't hear, uh, you should have gotten an email to the email that you registered with. That was most likely your work email. When you log in with that, you'll be able to change that if you so uh, choose. If you still have issues, though, please send that out, and Andy can uh, and I can look at it on a case-by-case -case basis to see if there's any issues with a particular individual. Ah, okay, someone does have a tip. Um, they weren't able to do updates like that. Um, on the app on their phone, but on their website on the PC, they were able to do all those things there. So it may be yeah. something that you need to, even though that we're pushing and it's really convenient having yeah. your hand on your phone, go to the website first, which is what Andy showed, and do all of that kind of updating and changing there. And then when you log in on your phone, you'll have all that with, you know, yeah. ready to. You can also uh, switch to a desktop view instead of your mobile view from your phone in the menu bar on the left upper left hand corner I believe from the app. So you can view it as a regular website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, Thank you, Andy. Good tip. Thank you, Captain Kelly said that. Um, 
Any other questions? Oh, wait. Yep, she said that worked. Yep, desktop is the possible solution. She went back to her phone and it showed that she did her updating fed through. So there's a workaround there. Don't try and update things on your phone. Do it on your on your big computer screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So any other questions? Those are all the questions we had so far. Um, go ahead, get them typed in. We still we have plenty of time here. Still, we've been yeah. set for an hour. We still got ten minutes left. Um, we do just have a thank you to Michael for stepping in and helping out this year. You know, you had to jump jump back in to be our <laughs> jump back in. after hoping you were you had you know <laughs> saved yourself from it all again. But no, he's been doing great. Yeah. Well, we've had an absolutely great conference team to work with. Um, the the group out in Kearney, uh, Andrew and Angie are all been fantastic. Um, so when you see some of those people wandering the conference after you look their names up in the full program, make sure and say thanks. And I'm sure none of them would turn down a drink at the exhibitor's badge. <laughs> so uh, feel free to do that. But it's been a great team to work with this year. Yeah, and, and I'll echo that. The committee really came together, uh, and it was they they've really set up like Andy. You are experiencing Andy here working at the app. But there are a lot of others behind the scenes. I don't want to say names because I'm going to forget somebody unintentionally. So we will have them listed in the program. But please, if you see someone listed in the program as a, being on the conference committee, really thank them because they they did this. Should be towards the top, or is it? Um, yeah. All right. Okay, so um, Chris is bringing it up because they really went out of their way uh, to do this. Again, they're donating their time, uh, coming out to Carney once a month to me, and Close your eyes, don't get dizzy, yeah, scrolling. and doing things. So yeah, so she will bring up the list, and there they are, right there. There we are. Yep, and we have had just an absolutely fantastic crew. So we we couldn't have done it without all of these folks. So uh, make sure you give all of them a, a big thanks. And any other questions? Um, that's it. If you have any last minute urgent things you need to know right now, type it now or forever hold your peace. Or until you want to send me an email. I'm happy with that too. Yeah, so. there's also on Twitter the hashtag NEBLIB, N E B L I B, NEBLIB 2017. Is, it should be at the top. top of the, I saw that, which I thought was yeah. really cool. People always ask. Yeah, I was a lonely voice there. for a while, but the commission has jumped up. And several other people, I just asked, we, if you've been seeing me scrolling with my phone, I'm actually seeing uh, several people like Christian Minner and others have been tweeting out uh, information about their presentations. So I really encourage you to go to that and use it uh, during the, the conference to share news. And uh, the communications committee will be working on incorporating more social media and hashtags over the next year as well. So hopefully this will kind of jumpstart our, our social media presence. And as you're, when you're at conference, anything you see that's interesting, use that Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever yeah. you want to share things. Mm -hmm. um, and then other people can see what you do. Yep. And if you have any questions or concerns when you're at conference, go ahead and, and track any of the conference staff down, and we'll make sure and get you up right away. And for that registration desk where somebody will be. Somebody's always at the registration desk. We, we promise to remove the shackles so they can go have lunch every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't look like anybody's typed in any questions um, yet while we've been um, chatting here. So I'm going to assume anything anybody wanted to know right now has been answered. Any last minute words of wisdom from anybody from Michael, Andrew, Angie? See y'all there. That's good. Yeah. See you next week in Kearney. All right. Thank you very Thank much, you. everyone.